red heat out there looks black. Ah, that you would actually, be confusing. You that would be kind of difficult. First couple of pieces when you first change over from one right. to the other, or you don't wait long enough and you come back in here and, and you're hitting it when it's actually you know only about 600 degrees. Yeah. That means you're working for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of the forges get around it, they become what are called riveters forges, and they have three walls and a roof. So that you can work out in main sunlight without actually having to see, because it encloses it slightly more. You get some shadows and everything. This is yellow horn. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use what's called a cutoff horn. I think that we here. change to it. And this is a hot cut. Right. And this is a cold cut. It's cold, you see, it's a much more oblique angle and not as sharp. Yeah. So you could actually nick it on two sides and, and then snap break it, it huh? Yeah. This one's actually going to cut it, and it's going to cut it when it's hot. And you never go all the way through, because that way you can't possibly scar your hammer. Good point. Hadn't thought of that, is it? Well, a blacksmith doesn't get paid for preparing his own. Right. Only somebody else's poor craftsmanship. Also, there's only so many fixes. So I guess it was hard to produce standardized items. Like if someone was going to make a musket to end up with something that would always take the same size ball, so that every musket took the same size ball, that well, must have been a problem. Well, actually, drilled out, so yes, your drill, your drill bit would be the same size. You'd have to have a precision drill bit for that. Or a lot of the time when you're using Damascus steel, it's actually before they decided to put the rifle in the barrel, right. it was formed around a piece of brown stuff that they knew was exactly the right size. Ah, now would they cast it that way? It's not cast. Um, then, these are cast. Now, when right. you want an absolutely perfect circle, you use these, which are called commanders. You make it as round as you can yeah. on the horn. And then what you do is you heat it up one more time after you've welded it together. Right. You slide it on this and tap it everywhere you see daylight, so you don't see more daylight. Ah. Since this is cast iron, you know it's absolutely round. Right. So you get an absolutely round ah. Because they did. I mean, you know, your chains and things have to have the right shape yeah. to them, or. You're but not in order to mo right move up the next step in production, you need to have interchangeable parts, and the only way to do that is to have real precision. They, and, mostly, you can tell from which blacksmith shop. If there were two blacksmith shops in the town. Oh, really? You can usually tell by just the de either the decorative features or the way they chose to, to try and do something. And what would be decorative features, like the twists on these hooks the and things on like the that? Hooks, um, a big one you'll see a lot are the the bean ends or the leaves on um, strap hinges. The leaves, yeah. Which are what these are? These are some of the questions we get asked a lot, so they actually made up some teaching. I mean, what you start, and that's your finished product. You know, trivets, things like that, all have oh, yeah. elements to them. This deck of remote is just simply cutting it and twisting it. Yeah, it's sort of a Celtic design. Oh yeah, you've got quite a selection of stuff. This here is stuff that the blacksmiths here have made, so you can pick it up from whatever. Oh really? This is extremely nice. I see this kind of thing. They make a whole set of. Uh, and they used to make handles. Yep, that's called this. a basket handle. Basket handle. The. Uh, and what's this little? Is there a special thing for this little fi finale there? That's called a rat tail. A rat tail. See when you get it done correctly, that one wasn't actually ever finished. Um, it comes, comes and meets itself. Ah. Well, this is really fascinating. Thanks very much for covering most of this stuff. It's actually more than he's probably going to want to use, but I'll certainly be interested. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You get yeah. people talking about what they like. Yeah. You know, you know, and that's the original uh, bellows huh, that, that they would use. That is the original bellows, and they do work. We don't tend to use them. Well, I bet not. The power goes out. And so there'd probably be the apprentice's job would be to keep that well, thing going. actually, in a busy shop, it wouldn't be the apprentice's job. What they usually do is go find a kid in the farm or somewhere in the town, 